So when uh, you, Stephen King, a horror fan, when do you go from that to running to represent middle grade and YA, or have you remained a horror fan who just also now likes middle grade and YA? Sure. I I do still love horror. I do. And and actually, it, it is the paranormal space that led me to young adult. I started my career signing adult commercial fiction. And one of my clients, Rochelle Mead, had an idea for a young adult novel that she sent me. And I fell in love with it. But I wasn't really sure I knew how to sell it. So I asked Michael Barrett, who uh, was already in the YA space, if he could give me a crash course on the who's who of YA publishing, if he could give me a reading list of books that were doing well so I could see what else was out there. And that that book was Vampire Academy, which has gone on to sell over a million copies. And spawned uh, a number one New York Times bestselling series that that built my career. I, you know, it, it was an amazement uh, to see, and, and it's something that built really organically. It was a small advance, um, but, and a paperback original, but that book just built and built and built. And, from there, the, the first person I signed on um, for their YA exclusively was Carrie Ryan for The Forest of Hands and Teeth, which is also a horror novel. Um, One of about... my most favorites. Oh, thank you. Um, if Carrie Ryan is listening, I can't get a hold of you through your website, Miss Ryan. I would <laughs> love to have you on the show. <laughs> I, will, I will pass the word along. Um, I, Carrie was the first person I signed for YA specifically and uh and that book became a new york times bestseller and i just thought you know i there's something here there's there's something about these books that that is connecting with me and and it was the same case with middle grade some of my ya authors started to write middle grade i again asked uh friends in the business to help me build a reading list and an editor contact list and and went from there and it it was just kind of a process of following what worked for me and following what i loved and and finding this space in in children's books that i find so inspiring um it was you know a series of happy accidents and 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 following following my gut to the material that I was connecting most with, which I didn't expect to be children's and teen, but but was, uh, and uh, very happily. <laughs> Any uh, insight as to why that might be? I am a sucker for a connected reader, and I don't think anyone is quite as passionate as the young adult readership or quite as uh, awestruck as the middle grade readership. There is a sense of wonder and joy and the, in, in the reading process that I am incredibly moved by. So I, I, I chase a feeling more than anything else and it's it's wanting to know that those readers are out there reading books that I helped get on the shelf and and feeling big emotions and and hopefully falling more in love with reading that is that is the goal always to 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 just try to believe that that somewhere out there you're creating a reader um uh moves me more than more than than I can really adequately express. Oh, I can see it playing on your face, and uh, <laughs> anyone watching this on YouTube can see it, and I think you hear it in your your voice as well. Uh, writers of adult fiction, uh, writers of all things not middle grade, oh you, and to a lesser extent me. Uh, <laughs> quite a bit of thanks because who do you think is grooming these readers? You're going to be selling to down the road, folks. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, you know, I think, I think children's books have created generation after generation of readers and, and the YA and middle grade space have been so rich over the past, you know, 15, 20 years and, and are increasingly rich. And I, I'm really grateful for, for the work that, that, that everyone in the industry is doing.